mic, record, and roll on. Don't get no sound from the board. It ain't down there, it's from the board. Ain't getting nothing from the board. Test one, two, test, test one, two. Ain't getting no sound. There, there we go, we're starting to come up. You gotta give me a little more, the most sound. I can get down. Then a little more sound. Uh uh, it ain't there. It's gonna have to bring up on the board. Uh where which one you got up? Uh uh, it ain't there. It ain't that one. Uh uh, not that one either. It's the one that's up. Uh the gain up on the top. The, uh, that that lever. Yeah, you gotta bring that gain up a little bit. Testing one there we go. There we go. Yeah, too much, a little too much. Hello, 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 my brothers and sisters in Christ tonight. It's a blessing to be in the studio with the mosquitoes and the flies. They're trying to tear us up in here, but we're going to let God's word go forth with power and authority. We're excited to be here uh, on the BBS Gospel Network. My name is Dr. Bruce A. Smith, and we are just so excited to be here uh, the name of this broadcast is Living the Christian Life. Uh, Living, Living the Christian Life broadcast is, and what it's about, the, what this whole broadcast is about, is about li us as believers living uh, a life for Christ, a life spirit-filled, a life on, on, on God's side and not the side of the world, which means we have to push aside uh, the lo our lust of our flesh and grab a hold to that spirit of God that we can be those spiritual men and women of God that he would have us to be. I know I'm right about it today. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited. I forgot the only one thing I wish I had done. I wish I had put a, a, a link on Facebook, but I forgot uh, to put that link on Facebook. But what we're going to uh, do for before we get into this uh, topic tonight we're going to have a word of prayer uh let us pray most holy god in the name of jesus oh god we ask you O oh lord to guide and direct us oh god help us oh lord to be strengthened by your word and your spirit tonight god hide us behind the cross let no people not uh see me because it's not about me and not about who i think i am or who you might think i am but this thing is that we're doing here is about jesus christ the master, we ask you to uh, let your word go through uh, every nation, every corner of the earth that the Internet uh, might travel. Let some man, woman, boy or girl be helped by this broadcast that uh, people might get saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, God. Oh, God, we want to give a shout out tonight uh, uh, to our pastor, Pastor Frederick S. Anthony, pastor of Old St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. And his beautiful wife, Sister Erie Anthony, we just so excited uh, about being part of that fellowship, part of that ministry. Uh, for that ministry helped us to be able to come and, and, and do the work that God is allowing us to do in this place. It's an awesome thing to, to, to do service, to do work for the kingdom and not realize or not worry about what people say or what people think. What we're going to do tonight, I'm going to read coming from the book of 1 Corinthians, the, ni uh, the 6th chapter. I'm going to read the 9th through the 12th verse of Scripture. I'm going to say that again. 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, uh, chap 6 chapter, verses 9 through 12, coming from the, the King James Version. It says, it says that, uh, now ye know ye not that... <clears throat> The ungodly shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but, no, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, or effeminate, or abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor, nor drunkards, or, nor revelers, revilers, or extortioners, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 11 says, And such were some of you, but ye are washed. Amen. But ye are sanctified. 
but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. All things are lawful unto me, but not, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the law, under the power of any. Amen. What I'm going to use for my text verse tonight, uh, or our, our focal verse, not so much a text verse, but our focal verse, is that uh, that 11th verse, it says, And such were some of you, but ye were washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of God. Uh, what I thought is going to be uh, tonight is uh, overcoming the enemy. And, and when we think about overcoming the enemy, we got to understand, get an understanding that the enemy is going to come at us from every direction that he can. That he's not going to hold anything sacred. He wants to steal, kill, and to destroy us. He wants to take us out. He's not our friend. He's not our boy. He's not our dog. He's not none of that. He's the one that wants to take us out and keep us from being in alignment with God doing the work that he would have us to do. He don't want us to serve him. He don't want us to worship him. He don't want us to praise him. He don't want us to give him glory. He don't want us to give him honor. He don't want us to do anything for the cause of Christ. He want us to worship the world, the things of the, of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. He wants us to get caught up in the things that have no eternal value. The things that don't have no eternal value uh, is something that we as believers shouldn't even have to worry about because if we're doing the things that align ourselves with God, then God will open doors that some of those things that we want, he'll give them to us. But, but the, the key is for us as a believer, we need to align ourselves with him because that's that important part, being part of the body of Christ, being that servant of God, being that worshiper, or as we talk in Christian orientation, being the, uh, being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Discipleship costs. Now, salvation was free, but discipleship costs. It cost us to align ourselves with God. It cost us to 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 uh, when the world is going to the left for us to stay you know, on the on the beaten path. It cost us. It cost us friendship. It cost us family sometimes. It cost us jobs sometimes. But what is that important part? Is it more important that we align ourselves with the world uh, that we might feel comfortable? But then I'm here to tell you, even if you align yourself with the world, you're still not going to feel comfortable. Because the world itself is, is, is looking for a way to not build us up, but to tear us down. So I'm excited today that, that uh, God gave us, uh, and I didn't even know this was the direction that we were going to go. I, I'm excited that God... Uh, gave us this topic and this thought uh, overcoming the enemy when I think about overcoming the enemy and I think about all that he does to, to try to knock us down to, to, to break us apart he'll use he'll use things in our flesh I mean he'll he'll use afflictions on us to cause us or to try to cause us to curse God and die to try to keep us from aligning ourselves with God he's looking for an avenue he's looking for a way to, to, to get us to, to turn our back on God instead of staying in alignment with him. But I, I want to reassure you, if, if you stay in alignment with God, recognize that it's God that we should live for, then uh, 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 we don't have to worry. If we recognize that, we don't have to worry what tomorrow brings. Because, see, one thing I, I learned uh, by following Christ, that boy, they frighten the mosquitoes out there. Uh, one thing I learned about following Christ is that he, he knows everything that we're going through. The enemy can't do anything without God's permission. And that's what we got to understand as brothers and sisters in Christ. Can't nothing happen to us without permission. See, see, the enemy can't just come up and do what he want to do to us. He has to get permission from God to put an affliction on us, to cause us uh, to 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 uh, stumble or fall. Uh, greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world, and that's what we got to understand. See, when we recognize that as great as that He that is in us, that means that that 
that that that spirit that's in the inside of us is much stronger than what the what what is, is clinging on to the world. So it's so important for us as a believer to recognize that the power come from from the spirit of God. And, and when we recognize that the power come from the spirit of God and not the spirit of man, and when we recognize that our strength, we we we. It's something about when we going through a situation and you feel like you just can't make it. You don't know what to do. Don't know which way to turn. I've learned that if you call on Jesus, that all you have to do is put our hope and our cares in God, recognizing that if we put all our hope and cares in God in every situation, in every circumstance, God will see us through. Don't mean we ain't going to have some bad days. Don't mean we ain't going to have some rough days. I think about when I had cancer and the enemy was trying to trying to get me to have a pity party, trying to get me to fall apart, trying to get me to throw my hands up and say, God, you can't work this out. But the spirit said that you won't have all these side effects. You won't have to go through all these, these dark days. But if you just trust in me. See, we got to understand. So we, so many times we so, we're focused more on the physical healing than first of all God healing us spiritually I would much rather be healed spiritually than to be healed physically the, the healing of me physically is only temporal but a, a spiritual healing is eternal we got to understand this thing now before I, I in this time I got to get back home where, where I need to be on this thing ah. when I look at this and, 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 and look at this thing close y'all when we realize that the enemy, he don't want to do nothing, but he want to trick us into believing that God will not heal us. But see what we do as 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 a people, and this just is not 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 the saved folk. What we do as a people, first thing we look at is the external. God more concerned with the internal man I would rather be healed spiritually in my spirit man than to be healed physically what are you saying if I'm healed spiritually that's building something for the kingdom of God if I'm healed physically that's temporal because someday this body this flesh of mine is going to die and I'm going to have to come out of this flesh but if I if, if the, the things that we build on those things that are eternal that are in the spirit amen hallelujah if we build on those things then we can please God who do you rather please what time is it we, we, we preach Friday and we, we and one of the things that we talked about was what time and we have to recognize what time it is in our lives as believers because when I think about the goodness of God and all that he has done for you and he's done for me, we have to recognize that it is time for us to align ourselves with him or is we going to stay in alignment with the world. But if we stay in alignment with him, we can be pleasing to him. We can be of value to him. I don't know about you, but I want to be of value. I don't want to be something just floating around uh, talking about. Uh, a living a life for Christ or living the Christian life and we say the name of this broadcast is but it's so important that we as believers actually live this life for Christ because nothing else matters no, our fears don't matter what, what, what good is your fears when, when think about this how do we know how much time we have left you don't know what if the Lord gave you one day left he's giving you an opportunity to do a work for him and then what we do we, we, we hesitate. That hesitation causes us not to be what he wants us to be. I know I'm right about it right now. Help me, Holy Ghost. When I think about the goodness of God and all he's done for me, when I think about where he has not only brought me from, but where he has brought you from, when I think about how we as believers, and he got me switching things up now. When I think about how as we as Christians, as believers, are living in a war zone, we have to understand this war zone, uh, this is a fight to the finish. But the one thing about the believer, the believer, if you are already saved, the believer already have the victory, we just got to realize it. 
See, we got to go to war. We got to go into to spiritual warfare, but we already are the victors. And if we realize that we are the victors in Christ Jesus, then then as as uh, this conference with, that we we spoke at on Friday, they used for a, a topic uh, reaching our destination through Christ Jesus and His Word. When I think about His Word, how are we going to reach? reach our destination it has to be through the word it has to be through the power of the holy spirit it can't be through my flesh it can't be because i think i'm the all this it ain't because because i got dr in front of my name or phd at the end that has no eternal value but the thing that has a value is is having a ba being born again that's what what makes the difference in this life for us to, as the believers we have to recognize that it's if we live this life that it be pleasing to him and realize that each and every day we are at war this is warring with the flesh this look warring with people this war against sin hallelujah when we think about this war is with sin it's not with with you my brother you my sister it's about fighting the good fight of faith trusting in a god that can do all things realizing that the enemy is only limited he has limitations but there is no limitations to God there is no failure in God I, I had to realize that for myself for, uh, for me to come out of the, the shell that I was in when we realize that there's no failure in God see the enemy tried to get us tied up that's the, the war part of the spiritual war that he wants us to fight he want to get us tied up and tangled up and want us to fight against one another or fight against our flesh fight against our spirit man and, and say, I can't do it. No, you can't do it. But God can. That's what's so awesome about things. When you, you when you serve a God that specializes in things impossible, when you serve a God that can do all things, when you serve a God that there is no failure in him. Hallelujah. It's an awesome thing to serve the true and living God. When I think about Jesus being the light of the world, and I think about how we are those uh, uh, little lights that illuminate that bring brightness to this world without us the believers there is no brightness in the world we're the one that illuminate because he, he has, his spirit dwells in us ain't that awesome ain't that awesome that's an awesome thing to think about that that his spirit dwells in us and that he used us as light to, to bring uh, to illuminate things in this life See, we need to, 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 to uh, try the Spirit and prove uh, uh, all things through the Spirit. We must recognize that through the Spirit of God, there is no failure at all. You know, sometimes we, we think, okay, I didn't succeed in this. Who said you didn't succeed? Sometimes we got we to gotta stumble before we can get up. Because, see, what you got to understand is just like a runner. Or it's, it's just like an athlete. They have to work out. Amen. They have to work out to get stronger. Just like we as believers, we have to work out all like a boxer. They have to work out daily running and doing all these different regiments of exercise daily, day in and day out and to get strengthened, to get in shape. We as believers have to do the same thing because, see, every it, it ain't going to always be a party out there when we minister to people out on the street because we got to understand ministry is not in the church. Ministry is out there in the world. And that's where we're supposed to be out there ministering to people, getting the good news of the gospel out to those that's, that's in need of help. It's easy to, to, to minister in the church. It's easy to say something in the church. But what we must do is get out there with those that, 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 that's uh, homeless, those that, 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 that's got all kind of things going on, mental illness and everything else going on. Some folks want to be healed. Some folks want to be set free. Some folks want to be delivered. And how they gonna, it's going to happen without us. For we are those lights that God's going to use. He's not going to come down and do it for us. He's going to use us. So what are we afraid of? What are we scared of? We're going to scare what people are going to say? Well, you're going to wait until, until, it's time, until you're dying day. And, and, and then you're going to say, well, I'll step up now. It's too late then. It's time for us to do a work for the cause of Christ. It's kind of time for us to realize that we are in the midst of a war zone. And when we're in this war zone and while we're doing this work in this war zone, that there's going to be some good days and some bad days, some high points and some low points. There's going to be some days that, that we're going to feel like we failed. But I found out there's no failure in God. 
uh, it got to work out your spiritual muscle. When you think about you running and sometime an uh, uh, athlete will pull a muscle. Hey, man, he'll pull a muscle and what he had to do is get that muscle back in shape so he can get back out there and really get to run. We have to do that spiritually sometimes because we're going to have some days when we're going to get beat up. We're going to get beat down. But I'm here to tell you, if you stand on the word of God, you trust God all the way, it's going to be all right. It, it, it's not everything is not what it looked like the enemy going to try to make it seem like you can't make it like you can't get through it but i found out without god i can't get through without god i can't make it but with him i can there's nothing that i cannot do ain't that something hallelujah do you want to enjoy a long long life it's easy to have a long life Amen. Go to Proverbs, the third chapter, verses 1 through 7. <coughs> Excuse me. Proverbs, the third chapter, verses 1 through 7. This, and this, this is what we, we have to do if we want to have long, a long, enjoyable, full life. Amen. Proverbs, the third chapter, verses 1 through 7. And it says, My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandment verse 2 it says for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee okay I'm gonna stop right there verses 1 and verses 2 first in, in verse 1 it says my son forget not my laws that's the first thing we got to do we got to recognize that God has some laws out there some commandments that he, he desired that not only desired that he demand that we, we follow if we want what's in verse 2 he says but in uh b part of uh verse 1 it says but let thy heart keep my commandments if we want to have what's in part in verse 2 we there's some things we have to do starting in verse 1 which is <coughs> but let thy heart keep my commandments which means we got to line up with him so it's all about him it's not about us Life is a test. We are, life, we're going to go through some heartaches. We're going to have to go through some hardships. We're going to have some struggles in life. And as we go through life, we got to understand that there's going to be some good days and some bad days, some days that we're going to feel like we just can't make it. But in order to make it, we have to stay in alignment with God's word. We've got to follow his commandments. Verse 2 says again, it says, for a length of days. Uh-oh, if you want to add time to your life. Hallelujah. If you want to add time to your life, and long life it says peace shall they add to thee so what it means we got to in order to add days to our life a length of life we got to align ourselves with God we got to follow his word we got to follow his commandments it's not about us it's about him are you with me right now I'm going to verse 3 I'm, I'm not going to go through this whole part but <clears throat> uh, verse 3 says it says let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck, write them upon the table of thine heart. What this is telling us is that mercy and truth, we need to hang on to that tight. You know, when you tell the truth, when, when you do truth, you don't have to think of a lie. Unless you're doing a lie, you got to always try to remember that lie. The truth is truth. Amen. Now, as I look at it, it says mercy. You know, we 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 want people to have mercy on us, but we don't want to be merciful to others. I know I'm right about it. And when I first started looking at this, it hit me harder than it probably hitting anybody. Because sometimes we are our own worst enemy. But God specializes in things impossible. Now I'm gonna go on down and and and, and I'm gonna skip a couple of verses that I want to get to this one verse. Verse five says, "Trust in the Lord with all thine heart; lean not to thine own understanding." What is telling us to do? First of all, it's telling us to do is to trust. Then it tells us what the object of our trust must be. It says, "In the Lord." Then it tells us how we must trust in the Lord, and then it says with all thy heart that means with everything that's in us we need to trust in the lord we need to trust god so that when that fear crops up 
what, what we got to do is push fear out the way because fear is not of God. We have to push that out the way and realize we got to trust God with, with everything that is in us. Amen. Then it says, it says, and lean not unto thine own understanding. It means that sometimes that as we're going through a situation, you ain't going to understand what's going on. You, ain't gonna, you can't see the big picture. But what you got to do is trust God with everything and not try to understand it yourself because you can't understand everything of God. We have to understand this one thing as believers. <clears throat> God wants to search our heart. He wants to show us to us. He knows what's there. But he has to show us to us, if that makes sense. Because what we think is there, we don't realize is really there. He didn't put everything in us that we need to be successful in the body of Christ. It's already there. But we, we have to get it revealed to us so it can come out like a bright shiny star. And God can use us for his, for his good, for his kingdom. We got to understand this thing. And when we do that, God will rear up in you something like you ain't never experienced in your life. It says, verse, uh, and I'm going to read, uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read verse 6. It says, in all your, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. That means that in everything we do, we need to acknowledge God. It ain't about your education. It ain't about your background. It ain't about our mother so-and-so son, mother so-and-so daughter. It ain't about I've been at this church for the last 40 years. That don't mean nothing. You, if you don't know Christ, you're still going to buzz hell wide open. Yeah. But it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. That means he'll guide you. He'll guide us through life. What we got to do is to stay in alignment with him. Recognize who he is and not who we is. You hear me? We got to recognize who he is and not who we is, if that makes sense the way I said it. Because I can tell you about me, I ain't nothing. If it wasn't for the power of the Holy Spirit, I wouldn't be up here right now. When I first started doing this ministry, and God gave it to me, I was terrified. I must tell the truth. I was terrified to do the work. I was terrified, to, especially to be by myself. I always wanted that crutch. God don't give us no crutches. He don't want you to have no crutch. He don't... Need no crutch to lean on. He lean on him. What did it say? Lean on Jesus. He's our crutch. And when we recognize that he's the only one that we need to lean on, he's the only one we need to rely on, he's the only one we need to trust in, then everything will be all right. I found this out. Sometimes when uh, he brings me into the studio, I want to go to the left, and he say, go to the right. I've learned now sometimes he'll, he'll, he'll uh, leave my mind blank and I don't have a clue what I'm going to talk about. Just like today, did not have a clue. Knew what I wanted to do, but I knew he took me in a different direction. So it's important for us to know that uh, we have to understand and come to the realization that he will direct our path. And that's, that's the important part. That's what I want you to learn or understand right now. Let him direct your path and no matter what the situation or the circumstance is. <laughs> Verse 7, I'm going to say this and then I'm going I'm, to uh, get off this a little bit. It says, that, Verse 7 says, but not, you know, it don't say but. It says, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Don't think you know something you don't know. We think, so many times we find that we as, 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 <coughs> Uh, Christians or, or people, even you don't have to be a Christian, but we think we know more than what we really know. Fear God. Have reverence for God. Recognize who he is. He is God, not we. We think we, sometimes we want to thank we God. If you find out, let a situation prop up. You'll find out how much you are not God. Then it goes on and says, and said, depart from evil. That means we need to shun evil. We need to run from it. <clears throat> Line ourselves with God. Trust in him. Abide in his will. He will direct our path. He will take us 
to where he want us to be in Christ Jesus. And I was going to go over this part, but I'm going to read this part, and then I'm going to get back where I was supposed to be at in, in the beginning. He taking me all over this thing. Uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, I'm going to read a couple of these verses of scripture. And it says, uh, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, and I'm going to start reading at verse 1. It says, to everything there is a season. There is a time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together. A time to, to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep, keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. And what we, 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 we mentioned this in our, our message on Friday when we spoke at this church. And we ha I asked the question, what time is it? Do you know what time it is in your life? But sometimes we are, we are, we're way out of place where we need to be as believers. We got to ask ourselves, where did God want us at this time? What what? is my place at this time we have to understand that God has a mission for each and every one of us it's not they are and they are not all the same but we have to recognize that if we're going to trust God and abide in him recognizing that he is God and not we ourselves recognizing that he is our creator God he is our sustainer recognizing that he is the one that we need to put our hopes and our trust and our carrying Recognizing not only do we put our hopes and our trust in our carrying, we're recognizing that if we want to make it and be successful, we have to follow him. We have to understand not if we just want to be successful that we need to follow him. If we will recognize that it, there is no failure in him and that in, in everything that we do, if we align ourselves with him, we are successful already. It's not a thing that we we trying to get success, but there's, if we align ourselves with him, we are successful. We have to understand this thing that that. As he, he embraces us to go out and do work and do ministry and serve and live a, a holy life, a life that's acceptable unto him, recognizing that people are going to see us day in and day out. And when they see us, they don't, we don't want them to see me. I don't want you to see me. I want you to see Christ in me. Because when you see me, you're going to see something messed up. But if you see Christ, you're going to see something that he can build up. Amen. Are you still with me right now? Well, we recognize that if we put our trust in him, that, that if we lose something, hallelujah, I've, I've lost things in life. I've had situations where I've lost everything I had. But when you stay in alignment with God, it's something about staying in alignment with God. And God used that situation to help somebody else along the way. They said people might be looking at you and say, man, that dude that lost everything he had, but he's still trusting in God. He's still having faith in God. That's what God wants us to be about. It's not about what we got. It's not about what we have. When I think about Job lost everything. He lost his kids, his family, and everything. Man, he lost it all. Had those soul balls and everything that he went through, but he did not curse God and die. I know I'm right about it right now. What we got to do is to stay in alignment with God, trust in him in every situation, every circumstance, and realize that God is going to sustain us through it all. And even if, say, something happens to us physically and we can't, I won't say this, Say, because this is a thing that, that, that so many people get and they get fearful. Say we get cancer. And God decides not to heal the physical man. Just because that physical body is not healed doesn't mean we're not healed spiritually. See, I would rather be healed spiritually. Because, see, I, one thing I understand, that this is not my home. I'm passing through on my way to heaven that when I get there 
I understand there's going to be a party like I ain't never seen before. There's going to be joy like I've never experienced before. There's going to be happiness like I've never been through before. There's going to be peace like I've never seen before. So right now, I can have joy despite what I go through, despite what I face, despite the hills that I must climb, despite the valleys that I must go through. I come to a realization that that, that nothing can happen to me without God's permission. And if he give permission for something to happen, it's not for me to worry about. It's for me to rejoice about. See, because if I rejoice in the Lord and all that he's done for me, despite what it looked like, what it feel like, or even smell like, that God is my sustainer. He is, he is my, 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 my uh, 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 heavenly reward maker. Because I, I've learned this. He has some rewards waiting on me when I get the glory. Hallelujah. I'm not worried about what people think no more. I'm not pe- worried about what people say. I ain't worried about what I have. I ain't worried about what I lose. Because sometimes if you don't lose something, you can't, re- uh, you can't really appreciate God in his fullest. But when you lose some things and go through some things, sometimes you can appreciate God much more. When s- sometimes you have to cast things away. You know, it, we want we are the worst hoarders in the world. We want to hoard everything. We don't want to give nobody nothing. We want to sell everything, but we don't want to give somebody. We see, see, how can you be blessed if you don't be a blessing? Amen. We want to be blessed. We want God to bless us. We think that material things is blessing. Material things are not always a blessing. It's not about the material things. You can't take them to heaven. But when you get some wisdom, you get some understanding through the word of God, that is a blessing. Because, see, that's something that you can take with you out of this life. The things that, that are in this life are temporal, and they just last for a season. The, the, that's what we was told about. What time is it? We got to understand that during this, this season, that during what we're going through, during what we're facing, that, that we're only here on assignment. When we was in school, I don't know about you, but when I was in school, and I realized what the teacher was trying to get through to me and I didn't want to hear it I didn't want to do it I didn't care but I found out through Christ that if I just align myself with him appreciate what he does each and every day spend some time with him every day I found that the more I call upon the name of Jesus the more I spend time with him in prayer the more I recognize that he is my God hallelujah he ain't got to be your God if you don't want him to but he's my God amen I take that thing personal when we recognize that he is our God and he is our sustainer that when that natural man tries to come and attack us that spiritual man can overcome it amen and I know we just about time for is, is, is running out but see it's more important that 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 spiritual man overcome that natural man because that natural man want us to do the things of the world but that spiritual man wants us to do the things of God. Which one matters most? You have to ask yourself that. I know which one matters most to me. The things that matters the most is the things that are of God, the, the things that are spiritual, the things that are holy, the things that he so holds so dear to his, life, to, to his heart. What do you think? What do you want? Do you want to be that natural man or do you want to be that spiritual man? Verse in, in, in First Corinthians, the second chapter, verse uh, fourteen, it says, "But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are not spiritually discerned." Hey Amen. If you ain't got the Spirit in you, you ain't gonna understand. You can't understand what 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 we're talking about when we talk about. That the spiritual spiritual man or the natural man. It is important. Uh, it's important for us as believers to understand. I have an understanding that it, there is a difference. Verse fourteen, verse fifteen says, "But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is not ju- not he himself is judged of no man." Verse sixteen says, "For who." have known the mind of God of the Lord that he may instruct him but he 
but we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. That said a mouthful to me. God wants us, as I prepare to close this thing out for tonight, he wants us to recognize that we as believers must fan the flame. We can't just walk around like we don't have a care in the world. In 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verses 9 through 11, no, verses 6 through 9, and this is coming from the New Living Translation, 2 Timothy, verses 1, chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, coming from the New Living Translation, it says, this is why I remind you to fan unto flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. Uh-oh. Verse 7 says, For God has not given you, given us, the spirit of fear or timidity. Timidity. Being timid. But of power, love, and self-discipline. Uh-oh building on something. So never be ashamed to tell others about our God, our Lord. And don't be ashamed of me. Uh Uh-oh. Either even, even though I am in prison for him. Now you know who this is talking though. With the strength God gives you. Uh Uh-oh. He's given us the strength to do everything that he wants us to do. Am I right about it? Be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. Verse 9. It says, For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserved it. Uh Uh-oh, help me, Holy Ghost. But because that was his plan from before the beginning of time to show us his grace through Jesus Christ. We got a work to do. We got to fan the flame. We got to recognize that it is for us to be self-disciplined. It is for us to step out in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's for us to not be ashamed of the cause of Christ. It's for us to realize that despite what we must face, God gives us the strength to be overcome. Do you want to be overcome or do you want to be overcome? It says, be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. You're going to have to go through something sometime. We don't want to go through nothing. <coughs> We'd rather blame it on being scared. We'd rather blame it on somebody else. We'd blame it on I can't do it. When I say this, I'm... I'm, I, I'm not talking to nobody. I'm talking about me. Because this, this is what was in me. This is where I was at. And it said, For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He saved us for a reason. He, had, a, he had, 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 had an assignment for us, and he wanted us to live holy. So, Because if we can live holy, we can draw others, not unto us, but unto him. Amen. And then it says, it says, he did this not because we deserved it. Uh Uh-oh! We don't deserve what God is doing for us. We don't. I know I'm right about it. But because that, that was his plan from before the beginning of time to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. Don't be a fool, people. 
Don't be a fool, brother. Don't be a fool, sister. <laughs> if you're going to be a fool, be a fool for Christ. Sold out. Dedicated. Trustworthy. Willing to stand up in the midst of the struggles of life. Recognizing that God specializes in things, in things impossible. We have to understand that as we are believers and called to do this work, this holy work, that we must understand that <clears throat> it is greater, or he is greater in us than we are of ourselves. We must understand that he saved us and called us to live a holy life. We must understand that we don't deserve what he's doing in our lives. We don't deserve not one bit. We might think we do, but can none of us live without sin. None of us have lived without sin. But because he is of his grace, all we got to do is repent. Ain't that awesome? If you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is repent. Isn't that awesome? To serve a God that loves us that much. Despite how many times we done messed up. And I don't know about you, but I done messed up so many times. I, I, I used to wonder, why would you want to save somebody like me? Why well, Things that I've said, the, the, the stuff that used to come out of my mouth, as filthy as my mouth can get. He still loves us. So much because of his grace and his mercy. And as I get ready to close, uh, I just want to thank all those that has helped to make this broadcast possible. Thank all those that uh, have been with us on this this journey. Uh, I want to thank uh, my family, uh, Dr. Victoria Smith. I want to thank my mother, even though she's crossed over, for, you know, it's, it's something about how even uh, a woman with dementia can teach you uh, things and help you to get into a place where God wants you to be. I want to thank my sister, uh, Phyllis Knight. Uh, you know, we've been through a lot. God has brought us through it all. I want to thank uh, those in the studio tonight. I want to thank Al Sykes, uh, who's on the controls. Uh, he does a good job each and every time. And if I get stuck on something, he has a word for me. And uh, I'd like to thank, uh, uh, what's her name? <laughs> Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the guest that we have here that was invited by uh, Al Sykes, uh, Dr. Stephanie Creighton. Amen. Uh, we're going to try to get a go to JTS. And, because I'm a JTS fan. Amen. But uh, uh, we want to thank her for coming in and uh, standing in for the broadcast. And <coughs> Help her to see that it's not as scary as it looks like. Amen. But God. Amen. We find, and this is, uh, and I'm, I'm closing. I found that doing this ministry and this work, we find that a lot of people uh, are timid, uh, haven't gotten there yet, worried about what people, I don't see nobody that see me. All I see is a camera lens and two people in the studio. So I don't worry about who sees me and who don't. But I thank you for those that are over there in, in Asia. I thank you for those in the continent of Africa. I thank those that are in the Philippines. I thank those that are in Mexico. I thank those that are in the United States. I thank those that are in South America. I thank those that are watching this broadcast in China. I thank those that are watching this broadcast in Japan. I thank those that are watching this broadcast to the uttermost parts of the world and uh, in Alaska and all over because God has blessed us. He's opened us up 
and given us, given us an opportunity to do international ministry, and I thank God for it. I don't take it for granted. I appreciate it, although I was timid in the beginning. Now I don't fear what people can say or people can do because people can only do so much, but I found out that God is all-powerful, and when you know God is all-powerful, you don't have to worry about what people say. You can just say, okay, keep on rolling. God is an awesome God. And as I, we close again, and I just want to close in a word of prayer and uh, thank God for all that he's doing. I didn't have a clue how this was going to go. <laughs> but God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I say thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for uh, being sustainer. Thank you for being a provider. Thank you for unlocking doors that no man can close. Thank you, oh God, for direction, guidance in the Holy Spirit. Thank you for being uh, all that we need. Thank you for being a God that specializes in things impossible. Oh God, help us, oh God, uh, to do your work and to do your will. Help us, God, to stand in the midst of opposition. Help us, God, to praise you in the midst of our struggles and our heartaches and our pain. Thank you, God, for being a God <laughs> that will never leave you nor forsake you. And for we ask it all now in the name of Jesus we pray. Thank God and amen. Be blessed. Have a good day. And we'll see you on next Monday. Be blessed.